And the problem is, as soon as we do agree with what is said, then it's like a poison that goes right into us and it causes us to be trapped in a dream of hell. That's kind of what he says about it. And here's something really powerful I got from this little book. Um, This was really good. He said, um, nothing that other people do is because of you. It's because of them. Whoa. I mean, I had to really take that in. And you know, it freed up all kind of space in me, that thought. Wow. Because you know what? It goes for the good stuff too. I was thinking about the Gita, and I have to paraphrase it. The, the, the Prince Arjuna is talking to Lord Krishna and says, Tell me, uh, what kind of person is most beloved by you? And, and the Lord says, Well, most beloved to me are those people who are neither lifted up by praise or smashed down by criticism. Oh, that's nice. Or as Don Miguel says it, whatever people do, feel, or think, or say, don't take it personally. If they tell you how wonderful you are, they're not saying that because of you. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Um, You're wonderful, not because of anything anybody says or doesn't say. You're wonderful because that's the nature of being. It's just not negotiable. Oh, working at the Center for Spiritual Living has been good for me. You know, some 16 years of um, wonderful lessons in how to not take things personally. Because I've just been noticing over the years the diversity of reviews I get. You name it, it's been projected this way. You know, and there in all amongst of it, you know how easy it is to start believing the reviews or living by them, afraid of the ones you already fear, looking for the ones you want to be true, surprised by the ones you didn't expect. Oh, it's a tricky, tricky business to depend on the outside world for your validation. Tricky, slippery slope. A person isn't great because of my opinion of them. Isn't that something? But let's go back to the health benefits of forgiveness work for a moment that we started off early with. If I take some of these hurts and I own them and I don't release them, there are some problems associated with it because it shows up in my wellness and my energy level because my energy that I would be using to process life and respond to life and live is just diminished because that energy is used up doing something else, nursing a grudge. Have you ever thought of that expression? Isn't it revolting? (laughs) Nursing a grudge making it all nice and fat. (laughs) Get it really healthy. Odd. Some of you may be fans of Pam Young, who is a writer who writes Young at Heart. Anyway, recently she wrote this great article. It says, Is there anything ickier than a rotten potato? (laughs) I got an email, she writes, from a woman who said her spiritual teacher asked the students to bring a clear plastic bag and a sack of potatoes to class. They were told to write the name of every person they had not forgiven on each potato. Some of the bags were quite heavy. (laughs) They had to carry their bag with them everywhere, putting it beside their bed at night, on the car seat while driving, next to their desk at work, until they could forgive the people that the potatoes represented. The student wrote, The hassle of lugging it around made it clear what a weight I was carrying spiritually and how I had to pay attention to it all the time to not forget it and keep leaving it in embarrassing places. (laughs) 
Pam goes on to write, naturally the condition of the potatoes would deteriorate to a disgusting gunk if you didn't let go and forgive. And this is a great metaphor for the price we pay for keeping our grievances. And then Pam, the author, tried it for herself. She took out some potatoes, cut them in half, and on each one wrote somebody she hadn't forgiven and left the half potatoes on her desk with a firm resolution to keep them there until she forgave all the folk that they represented. And then she reported her progress to her readers daily, and a week later, the potatoes were still there on her desk, getting all soft and dark. You know, just sitting there, staring at her, staring back at her like a good grudge will. (laughs) And just about the time when they were getting gross, she has this wonderful insight. She writes, it is as ridiculous to be mad at the potato on my desk as it is to be mad at the people it represents. There's no difference. Is it the potato's fault that my office smells like dirty feet? No, the potato is just being what it is, a rotting potato. If I allow the potato to stay on my desk, whose fault is it? Oh, and I found that so um, eye-opening, very valuable. I got to thinking, you know, a grudge will just do what a grudge does. It just stinks up things. And if I allow... um, the people that the potato represents, to pull me from my joy, well, it's probably because I have got a rotting potato on my desk. So then I can just evaluate that process. How's this working, Edward? More joy, more love, more peace? She writes, There is nothing or no one to forgive other than me for having bad feelings about the potato and the people that the potato represents. In fact, the potato that represents the people has been taking up way more energy in my mind than the people. I've been thinking about, I'm going to think about that. What a nice angle. Forgive the grudge. Forgive myself for keeping it for so long. I'm going to really look at that. And there's also another angle I want to talk about to you today about forgiveness, Um, a very important aspect, especially when you are the one who made the error. And that is the ability to acknowledge when a hurt was present, to admit it, and to apologize. Very powerful stuff. And there is some excellent practical guidance to do this inside of the 12-step approach to recovery. And for those of you who are familiar with it, you already know that step eight is make a list of all the people you've harmed and become willing to make amends to them. And step nine is make direct amends to such people wherever possible, except in the case where doing so would cause additional harm to yourself or others. And what exactly is an amend? Well, it's a sincere effort to apologize for past harm. It's a creating of an opening for healthier future relationships. It is a way of releasing guilt and shame and remorse. And sometimes an amend consists of a verbal apology which sincerely shows that you recognize and understand the hurt that was afflicted. You know, not come one of those half-baked apologies, well, I'm sorry that you felt that way. (laughs) A sincere apology. And sometimes it is accompanied by, or it includes, payment of money owed or, or something intended to restore losses from folk who were harmed by an action. Because amend means to make whole again. And I was thinking about another article.